right, thank you very much. And hello again, radio friends. How in the world are you? You doing all right? Well, I trust everything's all right at your house and that you've started a good day, or if you're listening to this broadcast in the night hours, you've finished a good day. In any case, turn things over to the Lord. He knows how to handle them, doesn't he? We're looking right now at Psalm 37, and I was just starting with you the last time we got together on the logic of the non-burned-up approach. The word fret not means don't get burned up. And the point is, fret not, he says, thyself in any wise to do evil. Getting burned up, losing your temper, blowing your top, worrying yourself sick, doesn't do any good. It just leaves scar tissue. So he says there's a logic to it. For, because, now this is verse 9, because evildoers shall be cut off. They, they'll be forgotten. You'll look for, for their place and you won't find it. Thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not even be. The only place of permanence and the only way to inherit the earth, that is to enjoy it all, to own and enjoy it all, is to turn control over to God. The meek, said he, shall inherit the earth. And our Lord Jesus echoed that same eternal truth in what we call his Beatitudes. In Matthew 5, the meek shall inherit the earth. Now, a meek person is a person who has given control to another. And in the highest and most holy sense, a meek person is one who has given control to Almighty God. Look around you and see how many people you already know whose lives were changed by that simple process. God, I can't handle my life. I'm making a mess of it. I'm a sinner. Please take control. In Jesus' name, that kind of a prayer has been prayed by thousands and millions across the centuries, and still around us today we find evidence, and perhaps in your own life you can see evidence of what happened when you said, God, I can't handle this, you take over. And then, oh, then everything around you seems to be different because there's a difference in your own motives, and there's a difference in the control of your life. Earth, uh, heaven above is softer blue, earth beneath is sweeter green, something blooms in every hue Christless eyes had never seen. Since I know as now I know, I am his and he is mine. You remember the old song? It's different because you're different. I hark back to that quotation that I made from Dr. Ogilvy's latest book about the love of God, where he tells that in a moment of, of real pressure and frustration in his own ministry, he cried out to God for a new touch of the Holy Spirit, and God gave him rest and peace and assurance. And the next morning, said he, he woke up, and these seven words were in his mind, and he wrote them down. Nothing has changed, but everything is different. Why? Because God is in control. Now, that's the background of, of this, this uh, paragraph of the psalm, which I call the logic of the non-burned-up approach. First, evildoers will be cut off, they'll be forgotten. There's no place of permanence for a person that is outside of God's will. Then in verse 12, God already knows the schemes of wicked people. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Payday is coming. Payday is coming. Now, God's laughter is a, an awesome thing. And uh, it is reserved, it seems to me, in the Bible for those who have rejected him. This passage here, another one later on that says, God will laugh 
when their fear cometh, the wicked, the God rejectors. Now, God's relationship with his own is spoken of as joy. The Lord God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. That's what the prophet said. Jesus spoke of my joy. Joy is more than happiness. Joy involves more than what we associate with laughter. Joy is the ineffable, profound experience of being absolutely right with the Lord and thus right with whatever circumstances you may be in at the time. You may be in trials, Peter said, though for the season, if need be, ye are in heaviness. That means you're, you're, you're down, you're sorrowful, you got the blues. You're in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold which perisheth, though it be tried by fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love. See, it's a person that gives joy. Whom? Him. Having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice. See, there's the joy factor. With joy unspeakable and full of glory. Quoting there from Peter. God knows what's ahead of the Christ-rejecting wicked person. Payday is coming. And he's going to have to face all of his wickedness and all of his schemes and all of his bitterness. It's quite a phrase there, gnasheth upon him with his teeth. You ever hear anybody gnash their teeth? That's quite a sound, isn't it? And God says, God is going to laugh at him. That doesn't upset God. Now, Learn this truth for yourself, beloved, will you? I have to relearn it every day of my life, I must confess. God doesn't get upset at the things that worry me. It doesn't shake him up. He 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 isn't upset. Now he's a he's an infinitely particular God. A God so infinite in his knowledge that he has assigned a separate number to every hair follicle on your head. Jesus said so. And a God that knows all about the little birds, one sparrow, said Jesus, doesn't even fall to the earth without your father knowing it. So God is the God of infinite particularity. And so he knows what's going on in my life, doesn't he? And the things that shake me up or even devastate me or the deep, lasting hurts that come from years of, of either rejection or, or abuse or sorrow or whatever it may have been, the deep, lasting hurts that flare up every now and again. Hurt like sorrow it comes in waves, doesn't it? You think you got it licked and then all of a sudden it hits you again. God knows about this. But it doesn't throw him. It doesn't upset him. Because why? Well, in the case of the wicked person that's plotting against you and hating you, gnashing his teeth, that means hatred and bitterness. You meet it now and again. What happens? God says, look, I know the future. I know what's going to happen. It's like saying, I've read the last chapter of the book. I know how it's going to come out. <laughs> God knows that his, that is the wicked's, day is coming. Now, this is the logic of not getting burned up because of other people's evil. Now, the, the next thing he says is, evil plans end up attacking the planner. Notice what he says. The wicked have drawn the sword, bent the bow to cast down the poor and needy. It says, their sword, verse 15, their sword, shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. Evil plans end up attacking the planner. Well, you've seen that happen, haven't you, in your own lifetime? Evil plans end up attacking the planner. 
Don't ever plan to get even with somebody. Don't ever plan to take revenge. Don't ever plan to hit back at someone because inevitably it hurts you. Inevitably it hurts you. It does something to you to be bitter. It does something to you to be unforgiving. It does something to you to be vindictive. That's a long word meaning, meaning you hit me, I'll hit you back. See, it's, it's not the damage you inflict upon somebody else. That, of course, is a fact. What really is important at this juncture, if you're a child of God, is if you engage in this sort of thing, it hurts you. The Minerth Meyer folk, you know them, the Minerth Meyer Clinic, doctors Meyer and Minerth and, uh, and Dr. Uh, Hawkins and all of the people they have with them on the radio. Well, I was with them uh, not too long ago when they were making a, a, a television segment. and They had me there as a, as a, as a, a guest. Actually, I was a straight man for them, <laughs> just responding, uh, I hope, intelligently to some of the things that were said. But I was amazed and, uh, and impressed to hear one of the good doctors say that a high proportion of the cases of chronic acute depression that they treat have their beginnings in deep resentment of some sort in the patient's heart. Now, I didn't originate that. I didn't dream it up. These are people who are professionals and who treat thousands of people across the course of any one year. And they said that a high proportion of the acute depression cases that they see are caused by deep resentment in the heart of the patient. Now, the patient is not aware of it oftentimes, but there it is. You only hurt yourself when you harbor resentment. Turn it over to Jesus Christ this minute, will you? By faith, turn your feelings over to him. He can be touched, it says, with the feeling of our infirmities. And as I began the broadcast, so I end this little segment, turn it over to Jesus. The only way to enjoy your world is to let God control you. Dear Father, today, oh, give us the good sense to turn things over to thee. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Till I meet you once again by way of radio, walk with the King today and be a blessing. You've just heard Walk with the King, the ministry of Dr. Robert A. Cook. This program is listener supported. For more information or how to find out how you can help continue this ministry, write to us at Walk with the King, P.O. Box 43, Trumbull, Connecticut, 06611 or visit us on the web at walkwiththeking.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry. This has been program number 7007. Thank you for listening to Walk With The King.